Nerd Legion, everybody. I'm Nathan. Hey, I'm Jose. I'm Josh. Welcome, guys. Welcome to the Legion. Welcome to the Legion of Nerds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where we talk about everything uh, comic book in terms of uh, the movies, the cinematic universe, what Marvel's doing, and these uh, uh, TV shows. Uh, we have a big fan of, of Marvel. The biggest one is Josh. I'm the biggest one of uh, the DC Universe. Nathan's the biggest one yeah. for uh, Star Wars. Yeah. So, so amongst the three of us, we'll be able to discuss uh, those those three universes and and expand and and, uh, and and as it grows in the in the in the movie industry. Yeah. You know, because they're making quick bank on every single film they're making. <laughs> yeah. TV shows like when no one's like no one thinks to do a TV show for a movie and from after movies and uh, Marvel did it. Marvel did it with one division and uh, and uh, and Falcon and the Winter Soldier and two amazing shows so far. Yeah. So don't really know how to start. We haven't really done this before, so let's just let's just wing it, you know. Yeah. Just just try to flex the wings. I thought that was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everybody? Thank you for uh, for listening to our podcast. Uh, uh, we're really happy that you joined us. If um, you're a new subscriber, just subscribe in the in the bottom row and uh, and hit that bell like and then that like. You know, I'm not a YouTuber, so I can't <laughs> feel the bell like. You know, I just hit the bell like. You know what I mean? Just. <laughs> Build the bell like <laughs> uh, the more followers so, yeah, helps like, okay you, that's you, all we're so. saying <laughs> yeah <laughs> spread the word <laughs> yeah so what's going on in the marvel cinematic universe these days we got we had wandavision in january right and now we have yep we're about what halfway through uh falcon and the winter soldier yeah they got about like yep. uh two we... episodes left i think yeah. Now, what do you guys think of um, uh, the new Captain America? I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, the U.S. agent? Oh, yeah, definitely the best representative yeah. for that. Yeah. <laughs> because, oh, right. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. No, like, uh, when I see, um, like, the regular Captain America, Chris Evans, and then I see the U.S. agent, I'm just like, okay, Amazon Prime Captain America? Wish version Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty accurate. Yeah. That's pretty accurate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. When I, uh, really, the first impressions I had of him, um, I found it, I don't know, I just see, you, you grew up with, with watching Chris Evans be Captain America all this time, and then you yeah. see this guy, you know, you saw what <clears throat> what the Falcon did. And, and and just bringing the shield to a museum and, and in respect for 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 uh, you know Steve Rogers you know so mm -hmm. and then you see this other guy come out of nowhere and then someone announces the new Captain America it's like it's kind of disrespectful man <laughs> mm -hmm. it's disrespectful to the legacy yeah like especially yeah. at the end of Endgame where like um uh chris evans just like traveled back in time to have some sex with peggy carter and then then they just get back into the regular oh time period uh come on come on let's be real here uh they tried to go with that route but um yeah like uh when he came back as old captain america he gave the shield to sam wilson and it would have been better like it would make more sense to have him hold the mantle as captain america as the falcon because that's how he currently is in the comics I do not know why they put his sh uh, suit and his shield back in the mausoleum. It just didn't really make sense in my opinion, but yeah. I don't know. Um, like, but it really dived down with the second episode where they talked about the storyline with Isaiah Bradley. I felt like it definitely helped Sam Wilson's character a bit. And... Yeah. Yeah, and it more so gave us a more of an in depth of what the Falcon is because if we think about it, when, when we look back at the previous films that um, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, like uh, they showed up both in the sequel, uh, Captain America: The Winter Soldier, right? That was the first film they showed. Mm -hmm. With Falcon, yeah. we didn't really get a background on Falcon, and the Winter no. Soldier, we just got a better depth with Civil War. Now with this, 
we, I finally understood Falcon as a character, and it made me empathize with him. Like, the writers, like, I'm telling you, yeah. with WandaVision and with, um, shit. Uh, with WandaVision and Falcon with the Winter Soldier, they definitely stepped up their gating in the writing department. Good for them. Oh, yeah. Like, personally, um, bringing it back to WandaVision, like, personally, I feel like Vision and Wanda were very very flat characters in the movies they didn't really have a lot of room yeah. in the movies no, to grow yeah. and that was really unfortunate yeah. elizabeth olsen and paul bettany are fantastic actors they really uh d- definitely stepped up their game uh in wandavision gave a very big time very poignant uh performances elizabeth um, olsen literally carried the entire show on her back she's the plot oh, yeah. and without her the show is dead <laughs> <laughs> Um, she she created the plot, man. She created everything, literally, in the world and her own <laughs> right? story, everything. Um, <laughs> but yeah, in regards to uh, both that and uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, I think um, Disney Plus has a good uh, track record so far for um, its Marvel original series, and I'm uh, excited to see what uh, what Loki is going to be like too, because that. Oh, I'm that excited for Loki. Have you guys seen? Sorry. Yeah, have you, have you guys looked at the like the new trailer for Loki? Uh, I saw I the first one. The I haven't seen the second one. I uh, sorry, Nathan. Yeah. Go ahead. So, so, yep. Go I haven't ahead. I haven't actually watched the trailer yet. Um, mostly because I don't know. I, I didn't really do the same for uh, WandaVision or Falcon and the Winter Soldier either. Uh, not specifically, just because I'm trying to stay away from spoilers because I don't. They, they don't always bother me. It depends on how uh, how interested I am in the show. But I just right. thought, you know what? I'm gonna check out these. Mar- I'm gonna check out these shows anyway. So I might as well go in as blind as I can. And right. uh, especially yeah. with um, that's a good way to go about it. Especially especially with Falcon the Winter Soldier, I found myself enjoying it a lot more because I didn't know exactly what was going on. Uh, right. I, I right. knew what well, the sh- I knew what the show was about. I knew what the show was about. I knew that Steve was no longer around. He gave Falcon the the shield, passed it on to him, and uh, that um, Sam and Bucky were gonna get together somehow, in some way, right? Right. Um, but I think it's interesting too how um, you know, Bucky is uh, haunted by the stuff that he did in in the past as the Winter Soldier. And I think that's a really uh, interesting route to take the character. Like he's atoning for his uh, his past sins that he wasn't in direct control of, right? Yeah. And also, can we just talk about like may- Baron Zemo dance cut has been yeah. dropped on YouTube? I was just uh, going yeah. to be like, did they actually? Are they actually serious? <laughs> I was like, okay, first off, I thought it was funny as fuck. Well, like, come on, let's be real. Uh, yeah. But, um, you, sorry, go ahead. You, you know that dance is going to end up on Fortnite, you know that, right? Yeah, oh, pretty yeah. much any gonna popular dance is going to end up on Fortnite. Oh, yeah, somehow, <laughs> some way. Big time. Um, Big time. I got to say, I was actually really surprised by Baron Zemo's reveal in uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier when he showed up at the end. Cause I, yeah, I actually had, I actually rewatched uh, Captain America: Civil War a couple months ago. So when I saw him at the end of that episode, I was like, "Oh shit, this guy again!" <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Baron Zemo. Like, okay, the like the writers of Civil War, like um, Joe and Anthony Russo. You got to give them a round of applause on that. Like, come on. Oh they, yeah. Yeah, big time. They're writing spot on. Um. Oh, like yeah. yes, yeah. yes. Like I will be honest, it doesn't really um, connect well with the uh, the original comics. Like obviously, I think they did Civil War a little too early, but that's besides the point. They did great for what they had to work with, but uh, for what I've known, that Baron Zemo got Captain America and Tony Stark against each other by not even laying a finger on them. <laughs> that's literally, like literally like. He's like, uh, if you think about it, he's way more dangerous than Loki. <laughs> he's very intelligent. He's rich. It, like apparently he was uh, like he's royalty. He's royalty. Know, like, Sokovia. <laughs> royalty like, Sokovia. 
Apparently, like in the new show, like he was rich and everything, and he has he's got swag, man, and everybody loves him. I love the dude. He's a good villain. Yeah, yeah like he's just one of those villains where like you just like can't help but like him. Like you just can't like he's like Kilgrave. Mm. I, I can like he has that swag. Sorry. You can empathize with him too, with uh, the loss of Sokovia because of what happened in Age of yeah. Ultron. Um, yeah. So it's not always about like agreeing with the villain that makes a villain better, but you can sort of start to see like why they're doing what they're doing and why they feel the way they do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. With the flaws like, that I a, give a, a villain has, you know. Yeah. Um, I honestly have to say my favorite uh, interpretation of a Marvel villain is definitely Thanos in uh, Infinity War. I love what yeah. Josh Brolin oh, yeah. brings to the brings to the role. I love that, um, like you don't agree with what he's doing, but you you understand. Um, yeah, because of what happened with his home world and why he feels like this is what he has to do. He's the only one in the movie that's dedicated to what he's doing. All the Avengers are all across the galaxy. They're not on the same page. They're trying to figure out how to stop him. And Thanos wins because he was committed to his goal no matter what the cost was. Right? The the, the fact is, like, as well with Thanos, he was very intelligent, you know? He was very... Uh, he was been planning for years. We saw it in other movies in the... In the in the after credits of uh, of the of the movies, like how we got snippets of being like like the last one before Infinity War was I think five like him going to get the the his his you know the 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 gauntlet the gauntlet right? and just be like and be like yeah fine I'll do it myself that was the last one before Infinity War and then so we got this whole huge stretch of an arc for ten years. A marvel of 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 Thanos going to be the bad the big baddie, you know. Mm-hmm. So, and then we and then we fast forward, and 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 I saw another video of someone breaking it down. Apparently, I was like, like, be, like the way it wasn't. How how was it? It wasn't that everybody was now more prepared, because Doctor Strange gave everybody that opportunity to be more prepared for Thanos in the in like later on again, you know, but. The fact that they were fighting a younger Thanos, one that was less prepared, one that changed his his morale, right? Because the mm-hmm. whole idea was to wipe out half the universe. But if you notice his his morale change, I'm being like, you know what? No, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna wipe out Earth because screw Earth, Earth. I, like he was pissed off. He was like, I want to wipe out Earth because you guys are are like insects to me. Your pests, you know. So I'm gonna get rid of you, and and I and someone pointed out saying that that ultimately that mindset is what lost him the war. Uh, I saw that you video know, on like the fact that like here was the reason why Thanos lost, and I think that key point right there is that he went from like trying to do something justified to doing something villainous. And I think because he yeah. changed his perspective on what to do with like um, uh, with like Earth, they um, Thanos decided to be like, hey, you know what? Um, these people really don't care. No matter how much civilization I wipe out for all the people that are like don't have the same mindset as I do, so let's just wipe everybody. Uh, so let's just wipe all that out of here. And honestly, that like I didn't see it at first, but. After, like, looking into that, it was just like, holy shit. Joe and Anthony Russo, they thought of every single aspect. The character development in every single one of the Marvel characters was so adept that nobody yep. could even see it at first yeah. until you rewatch it, and then you yep. analyze every single aspect that each, that each of these characters did. Mm-hmm. So. And that's why they did Infinity War and Endgame. Yeah. They did a really good job with them. Yeah, which... See, that game got now, taken down by oh, freaking yeah. Avatar. <laughs> we're, uh, we're we're back at it again. Avatar uh, took yeah. number one and rewound it, but Egg Day did good for the time that it was number one. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> see, oh yeah, I mean, nothing matters. Uh, 
between Avatar and Endgame which one is the highest grossing movie because either way, uh, Disney owns both, right? So yeah, Disney now to, owns both. So basically, they, it's like to, sure. Let's uh, let's find it out. Why not? I see this as an absolute. I see this as an absolute win. <laughs> Perfectly balanced. <laughs> As all things should be. <laughs> oh my god, the I gave me. Here we go. Oh jeez. Uh but we then see that translated through Thanos ideals of the fact like a saying, I'm gonna wipe out everything, like the half of everything, right? And the fact that he he said that it was gonna make things better for everybody, um, he really felt like he was doing something right, and then now that gets, we get to see that in, in 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 uh, Falcon and the and the Winter Soldier, like, like throughout the whole like there's four episodes in now, and like they keep talking about when people were gone for five years, you know, people were allowed to be in places they've never been, and they started to rebuild, and then the people that came back just put everything back together. So it's like I mean. And in the wrong way, in the way that the world was corrupted before, I guess. Those, the, the, I'm sure they're talking about politicians, people that were in power, you know. And it's just, um, it just set the world in a in a bad way again, you know. And and so, it's it. We're seeing the, these two ideals, like of these people that lived that never that had never been wiped out, and these other peoples that have been, you know, or, 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 or yeah. So. It just is kind of sad to see because, uh, like, what do you guys think about the main villain in in the Falcon and Winter Soldier? The the girl, I forget her name. Uh, oh, where are you? Ugh. Well, let me say, I think it was because she. Yeah. Because she. Yeah. Sorry. Yep. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! You forgot. Um, I was actually gonna. No. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I was sorry. actually gonna say <laughs> even in Wandavision where um when Monica came back right the episode was actually started with her coming back from the blip um i yeah. think it's actually really interesting to see like the chaos that that created like you see in um in far from home when the uh the kids in high school all of a sudden came back on that in the gym right and that was that was yeah. more or less played for laughs but in wandavision we can see the the chaos that ensued at the hospital when people are coming back all of a sudden left right and center and everybody's freaking out because it's been five years for those people that were gone. And uh, okay, so her name is uh, Carly Morgenthau. Morgenthau, I think. Oh, yeah, Car yeah, Carly, Carly Morgenthau. Yeah, like her her ideals, they're very extreme, you know, and they're very extreme. But I mean, out here, there's people that agree with what she's doing. I, in a, in a sense, I, am, I I understand what she's doing. Do I agree with she what she's doing? No, because I don't believe violence is the answer ever. But I mean, but again, that's uh, that's part of the story arc of what she's going through, and I totally get her rage. I totally understand her rage. Yeah, because she she worked hard to rebuild after she lost. She probably lost people, right when. Thanos yeah. snapped his fingers, so she rebuilt. She put the effort and the time into rebuilding and making things better for herself and for the people that she loved. Now, all of a sudden, right. everybody's come back like nothing ever happened, and it's just it's chaotic, and she wants her life to stay the way that she, that it was when she... It used to be. Right. Instead, which, which, like, which, like, here's the thing. Um, if if we live in a world where, like, half the population got wiped out, and then you try to rebuild civilization, but then all of a sudden people came back. Like, honestly, if I had been in that position, I would have been like, okay, cool. Um, I'm now, like, back to well, back to the people that I'm loved with. I'm now back to my friends and family. Like, I'm good with all that. Like, I didn't need to, like, be, like, all, all like, depressed because all of a sudden half of my family is, like, wiped out and all of a sudden came back. I mean... I guess it's like a reverse emotional kind of trauma, um, yeah. which, which is kind of like an interesting aspect to go on, but I don't, I don't think it really makes any sense in my eyes. Maybe it's just the way that oh. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's just from my opinion, being like, oh hey, you know what? If my friends and family come back, all of a sudden, yes, I'll be in shock, and and yes, I will be like relieved that they came back, but 
I wouldn't be like going off like killing people just for the fact of like returning civilization back to the way it was. Like that just doesn't make any sense. Uh, I I guess I guess the the way that I I mean I, I connected with her with that villain was like she I think I don't know she hinted as if her and other people came from. I'll give you this idea. I'll give you. I'll give you. I mean. I don't know if I should say this. Actually, I've heard that there are people in in the Middle East. I'll give. The, I'll, I don't want to. I don't want to throw pit, uh, politics in here, but it's just something that I've heard in the Middle East that people cannot cross uh, this wall. I, and and I wish I was more accurate. And I'm sorry if anybody's listening. I wish I was more on point with this, but it's there's just a division between two people that they they can't cross the wall because it's the the one type of one uh, group of people believe that this is their homeland and the other people believe it's their birthright to have this land and and it's just this like kind of push and pull so i feel like that's where the story is kind of pulling from a little bit where what if and both sides half the people disappeared and then there was that wall was taken down oh i see what you're saying and like yeah okay you know what i mean yeah yeah like i see what you're saying that like yeah, like like let's just say yeah. that wall dick had taken down. All of a sudden, both sides come in. Obviously, it's gonna be like yeah. Now I like uh, like uh, like now I it's get it. Free game. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Like it's free game, but like before, like I said, like with civilization, it's back with like everybody being in one. But then half of like, but then half this population was gone. Mm-hmm. But then when they come back, it's like yeah. you're back to the way it was. So yeah. So like. Yeah, like, if they're going off of what you just said, that makes a lot of sense, mm-hmm. but, yeah. uh, but, uh, but again, if the only way that she would actually have a kind of a redeemable aspect is that if she just, uh, the only way that she could have a, re- a redeeming quality uh, about herself is saying that, like, she used to miss civilization, but then something traumatic happened, and then all of a sudden... Uh, she found this new world where, like, half the people that she didn't like have, like, gone away. And then all of a sudden they come back, and then yeah. she's like, well, shit. Like, if they think about it in that narrative, I'll be like, okay, that makes a lot of sense. But, I don't know. I think I might need to re- enough of her yeah. rewatch it. Eh? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, like, a. Uh, um, well, we don't... Sorry, sorry. I, 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 like, I don't mean to, like, cut you off. Like, <laughs> every time like, I try to, like, no, interject, okay. like, go, go. no. What are you gonna? What are you gonna say? No, 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 no. Like I was gonna say, like I need to rewatch it though because I need to see if, um, if that holds water because I didn't really think about that until now. Mm. But yeah, like the more times I, I rewatch we, it, it will probably give me a better understanding of the characters. That's how I feel. I think I think we have yet to understand the characters because. How many episodes are left? Five? I mean, two more? Two. I believe the next one is Yeah, next two week. more. Two more. So we have yet to understand her. We have yet to understand where Sam is going with this. And, like, like I mean, he does. I mean, they're showing why he's a good candidate to be the next Captain America. And, and clearly, I mean, he is a good candidate. And, and it's just. And I hope he becomes one. I mean, obviously he will be one by the end of it, but I'm excited for him to be one, and he deserves it to be the Captain America. You know. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Question. I, I feel like, ever, like. Okay. Go. I'm sorry. I feel like uh, I was a bit concerned with um, Falcon and Winter Soldier only being six episodes. Uh, I. Yeah. I don't know. I kind of prefer it's like. Yeah, sorry. I don't know if it's getting a second season. They didn't say that it's a limited series. WandaVision, I know they didn't say either, but... Uh, uh, I did some digging, and WandaVision is going to be a limited series. They're not doing a season two. Uh, yeah. Falcon and the Winter Soldier, I think if it gets enough praise, they might change their minds. Yeah. Um, but at least in that regard of like not being as long as WandaVision, I was a bit afraid that it would have less time, right? Because that's three extra episodes that WandaVision had over Falcon and the Winter Soldier, so it was able to put more time uh, into right. into the characters and the situations. 
Falcon and the Winter Soldier, I almost feel like, not necessarily that they're rushing through it, but some things have to be kind of paced uh, quicker than uh, what it was with WandaVision. Right. That's true. Um, that's true. I don't know. I'm, I'm excited with everything that's going on, and it, it gives a lot of... It, 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 like, we're looking at the initial story of what's happening in front of us, you know? Like, I mean, <laughs> like what? Like a month ago, I was looking at WandaVision, and... And, and I was watching the entire show, and I thought it was awesome how in the end of the series, like, like Wanda got her full Scarlet Witch look, and then, and then now she's creating, and that and now she we know she has chaos magic, and now she's up to no good with the book, and then that's gonna bleed into multiverse of madness, and then, and then we see, oh, and this is something I don't know if you guys knew with Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and I didn't think about it. It actually might bleed into um, uh, the, 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 what was it? God. It, what's, what is the other movie? I forget. It. Hold on. I got to do a little bit of research. Is it Spider-Man? Shang-Chi? Oh, Shang-Chi, yeah. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier will bleed into uh, what I heard, Shang-Chi. Because um, the power, what, the power broker? Is that, that's the, that's one of the is one of the um, potential villains of, of the uh, of the show. Apparently that's going to believe the power broker would be in Shang-Chi, but we don't know. There's just subtle hints in it in the show to refer to that a little bit. So I'm excited. So we have WandaVision, which is going to bleed into the Multiverse of Madness. Then we have Falcon and Winter Soldier, which is going to bleed into Shang-Chi. And then now looking at the at the new trailer of Loki, right? Uh, because you didn't, guys didn't see it, but Loki is going to, like, he's he's an ancient, and, he, and he's an agent. No, he, he's, he's an Asian, or he's an agent? <laughs> he's an agent. He's an, uh, Nathan, cut that out. He's please. an agent. <laughs> <laughs> he's an agent to restore uh, the ah. timeline. He's, he's, he's going to restore the timeline because it's all messed up right now. So... Mm. We're gonna see what happens there, and uh, and that's I don't know what that's gonna bleed into, but I guess just the multiverse and madness as well. Because we even Loki being around now is messed up the timeline because yeah. he died Big in time. Infinity War. So now this version of Loki that escaped with the Tesseract from the timeline of, I believe it was Avengers one, right after he was arrested. Yeah. Right, but now he's messed up the timeline because he's not supposed to like at this point in the timeline he's not supposed to be alive he's dead right it's yeah. not surprising since he's the god of mischief now he's messing around with everything right so i saw a theory online about um will loki end with um the character of loki coming to terms with his own death uh, at the hands of Thanos in Infinity War, and like actually honoring that timeline and allowing himself to like die at the Whoa. hands of Thanos. Uh, I, uh, I think like, I think that's very like I think that's legit because if they like if they wanted to with the Loki miniseries, if they wanted to, all they have to do is like show a flashback sequence of the future timeline of Loki, and then Loki accepts himself and then goes back like. Basically, if they want to just, just do a cash grab storyline, they just throw in that clip at the end. Like, that's all they really need to do. Yeah. But but here's my thing about that, though, is we're talking about Loki. Loki, who has, who has tricked people into thinking he was dead previously. So, and obviously, even though, like, in the last scene that we saw with Loki in Infinity War, that he was, he, he was about to fight Thanos and, and, and like, I guess he was willingly like about to sacrifice himself because he found love within his brother and his family. We this new Loki, he had like all that character development that got cut off early earlier on from the first Avengers movie is gone now. So it's basically reset to, for him to yeah to reset. So he might he might he might be like White Vision in a way where it's like yeah he can see the experiences of, of his past self, experiences of his past self. But, but he's not the same one because 
he's not the same one, and he's not going to make the same choices. Yeah, they, they've already yeah, they've already totally new Marvel's movie. already calling this Loki a variant. They're not calling him the same Loki. He's a variant of Loki, right? Okay, okay. Because you got to remember, this is different Loki. This is all caused by the Avengers having to go back in time and all those uh, oh. previous uh, moments in time to get the Infinity Stones, and that's. That's one thing that bothered me about Endgame because it's a time travel story and time travel stories are very easy to screw up if you don't uh, if you don't if follow. you don't follow it or pay attention. If you're not careful with it, you can yeah. really mess things up. And that's one thing I was really concerned about with with this MCU Phase Four is that if they don't resolve the timeline issues we're going to have problems of uh, character deaths meaning nothing. Right. Right? This could make, if they're not careful, this could make Natasha's death be meaningless and have Tony's death be meaningless. They're already right. talking ab They're already talking about Robert Downey Jr. Jr. coming back as Iron Man and yeah. uh, how if it's going to be done, it needs to be earned. I think what they're going to do is that they're going to bring it back as a hologram for really for really yeah. Williams. That's the only way that they're going to do it. I can picture it, and that's the only logical solution that I can think of. Because if they bring him back, that means his death in Endgame means absolutely nothing. Yeah. Well, well, not exactly because like he. I mean, he's a he's a smart man, you know. Like, he is, yeah. Maybe he didn't plan to die. He didn't probably plan to die. He probably knew what he needed to do by the time Endgame happened, and so he he did it. it it's right? it's symbolized but, by the moment in uh, in Endgame when um, Doctor Strange holds up his finger, showing one, to signify to Tony that yeah. this is the one reality that he saw in which they won. That moment was actually improvised yeah. by Benedict Cumberbatch on set. Oh, yeah, really? it was improvised. See, impro uh, man, when actors improvise, yeah, it just yes. makes it works, things so much it better. It can work so well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, which also in Infinity War, I'm not sure if you guys noticed this, when, like, the event, like, when Tony Stark, Doctor Strange, and Spider Man met up with the Guardians, um, like, like, uh, <laughs> like, there's that one scene where, like, <laughs> where, uh, where, like, Star Wars was this, uh, we're just going to be, like, okay. Uh, I'm gonna say this to you guys one time. Where is Gamora? And then Stark is like, well, uh, uh, "Yeah, uh, I'll do you one better. Who's Gamora?" And then Drax throws in the one line, "I'll do you one better. Why is Gamora?" <laughs> that li Drax's line was improvised. <laughs> Everything else was uh, scripted. That was funny as hell. The, the Doctor Strange looked. I like Doctor Strange's look <laughs> to Drax. It's like. What the hell is this guy like? What? <laughs> what did he just say? <laughs> what did just, this idiot just say? What did I just hear? <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, um, but crazy. Yeah. Um, but what do you what what do you guys see the the whole th Marvel Cinematic Universe going to go now? Like, I can I, pre I have a couple of predictions. Uh, I think they're going to bring in. Um, Crud, uh, crud, what's his name? Um, I think they're going to do Galactus. But I also think they're going to bring in... Um, yeah. I forget his name. Um, he's like... Uh, Mephisto? Not, uh, not, uh, not Mephisto. Um, he's a... I believe he's an X-Men character. Um, crud, I forget his name. Okay, I'll just stick with Galactus for, like, right now. Um, but I think they're going to bring Galactus in. Uh, the, the way... Uh, but I also see them bringing in the illusion of scrolls. Because... Yeah. And, yes, in Captain Marvel, they tended to do a 180, made the um, uh, the Nova Corps the bad guys, and made the scrolls the good guys. Which is an interesting switch. But what if the next Captain Marvel film, or for the next phase of the NC... Uh, Next phase of the MCU, we throw in the scroll invasion and we throw in Galactus. Mm -hmm. Or that Galactus is coming. Or that Galactus is coming like, from the heads of the scrolls. Mm. Potentially. He so a lot of the things that we haven't seen with and the potential of the scrolls is obviously the invasion, like you were saying, and then 
and Fantastic Four has to be coming, and and there has to be that one scroll. What was that? It was it was it was it was a Super Scroll, wasn't it? That had the powers of all the Fantastic Four. Uh, yeah, uh, Super Scroll. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah, like Super Scroll. Uh, he managed to like get all the powers of each of them, but only if uh, yeah. he managed to get some contact with them. Oh, I thought it was at the same time. I at the same time, yeah, like if he gets in contact with them. Uh, that's why with the Galactus so, plot in like yeah. the Fantastic Four sequel, the Fox version, the Bob one, uh, mm -hmm. when that happened, when you see Johnny Storm and um, uh, inheriting the powers of like Sue, and then all of a sudden Ben at one point, like that was that was kind of the idea of how the uh, of like the Super Scroll got all four of their powers is that he got a, managed to get a hold of them. Right? Uh, he got yeah. all of them together and then he becomes Super Scroll just by getting their powers like that. Um, like, I believe, like, I know there's one variation where like, uh, I'm trying to remember. Like, I know like when the Super Scroll got his powers, like he managed to get them from the Fantastic Four, but I don't know exactly if it was from the same meteor that got the Fantastic Four the powers to start with. Mm -hmm. I'm, I would be really excited to see him appear because, we, the, I mean, the scrolls have already been in, introduced. The invasion's going to be there. That's going to, like, that scroll, Super Scroll, is going to be there. The Fantastic Four have to be there because they're, I mean, that's a part of their timeline, too. Uh, right? The Fantastic Four, they need to be introduced soon to bring Galactus. That's the only way. There's no. There's no, like, they have not announced, uh, wait, have they announced a secret invasion already? Mm. What's the timeline? No, no, no the timeline is phase game? four, and right now this is the aftermath of the uh, end game. Yeah. And I believe they're just trying to set up for either the scroll invasion or Galactus's arrival. What are the other? I think Galactus would have to be the next Thanos, obviously. Galactus right? is 100% going to be the next Thanos, 100%. Yeah, and then um, so I feel like that like has I feel to like that's um, mm -hmm. what's uh, I guess um, fun about MCU's Phase Four, but also uh, I don't know because like Marvel obviously doesn't want to become predictable with uh, with Phase no, Four. Of course not. Um, I, I know a bunch of people were upset that Mephisto didn't get introduced in WandaVision, which a lot of people seem to think that he <laughs> was going to be, right? Um, yep, I even thought But, was, uh, but I, I thought, thought, you know what? It makes sense for them not to do it because it doesn't make sense for Marvel to show all their cards right from the get-go, right? WandaVision was their first show. It was the first introduction to Phase 4. And it's like, what, you think they're going to... Like, show you everything at once, bang, bang, boom, here's the bad guy, here's what's happening. No, they're, they're going to play yeah. the slow game, they're going to build it up, just like they did over the past ten years, with we, all the way up from Iron Man to Endgame. They're going to do something like this again, but it'll be in a different way. Because we're basically, yeah. I think we're basically in uncharted territory with Phase 4, because we're bringing in, we're yeah. bringing in the Fantastic Four, we're bringing in the X-Men, Characters that Marvel previously didn't have access to because of rights, rights issues and stuff like that, right? Yeah, so, now they have, like, almost all their characters back except for the solo rights of Namor and Hulk. And, Spi so, and Spider-Man. So this... Oh, Spider-Man. So I'm currently yeah. looking... At, well, Spider-Man, they're currently, so currently... have a deal with Sony. So, but the only way that actually if Marvel wants to get Spider-Man back completely for free is that if... Disney Sony buys, gets bought out. If Sony gets bought out by Apple, yeah, or another company, and there's no way that the, there's no way that Sony will because Sony is is a giant in itself. There's like we, they, like you got to remember they they have their mascot as Spider Man. They're never gonna give up Spider Man, but because because of the the way that Marvel has you know brought up spider man within the mcu and introducing it sony is looking at that being like we want some of that cake you know yeah. so you know um i'm currently looking at the timeline um the updated one i think um 
and uh, so we are currently we so in the beginning of the timeline we're in the very beginning of the phase obviously so Falcon and the Winter Soldier uh, one one division and then up next would be uh, Black Widow yes so and then after that we're gonna see the Internals uh, well I, I, this is not just in order this is just kind of I don't know where exactly where it's gonna hit because you know COVID you know COVID's gonna predict where these movies and shows are gonna end mm -hmm. up right and uh, in our in our, in the year so. Eternals is one that we need to see. Shang Chi is the other one. Loki, Hawkeye. I totally forgot about Hawkeye. What if? And then Spider Man three, and then Multiverse of Madness, and then after that would be um, on the on the on the on the third quarter. Thor: Love and Thunder, Black Panther uh, two, Captain Marvel two, um, and then the last one, the last part of the phase would be uh, Ant Man: Quantum Realm. Yeah. Blade, and then Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three, She Hulk, Moon Knight, and Miss Marvel. So, so those would be the in the the total amount of shows and movies that we will be seeing, in in the next couple mm -hmm. of years. I think so. uh, I think the one project that definitely has uh, the most unfortunate circumstance is uh, Black Panther Two, with the loss. Chadwick, of rest in peace. Oh. Rest, rest in peace, King. He, and my brother and I, we were, we, we, we were talking, my brother and I, about it, and uh, and he was saying like, how are they gonna do it? And I've been keeping updated on the director. Apparently, he's finding it very difficult mm -hmm. to and, and and hard to write a story without, you know, <laughs> Chadwick the, the Boseman, main Black character, Panther, you know? right? You can't, uh, you yeah. can't, you can't. Like, I'm sorry, you, you can. You can, but it's it's going to be very awkward, and it's not going to be look right, and it's not going to feel yeah, right. Yeah, Black then, Panther so you... 2, it's probably going to be one of the most awkward movies in the MCU now, with Chadwick Boseman passed away, because, yes, I know they're going to kill him off very early in the film, um, and it's just going to make the entire film be like, oh, we're forced to like have Shuri as the new Black Panther, which I don't mind. I don't mind that at all. It's just the fact mm -hmm. we know it's too early, but like, here's the thing though. Very early in the MCU, they replaced uh, Terrence Howard with, with Don, Don Cheadle, Cheadle on yeah. War Machine. Don Cheadle, like, War Machine, like, yeah. like, like, like with no issues at all. Nobody said anything. Nobody did anything. Like it was just straight up. Like, oh yeah, they switched the actor. That's fine. Like with Chadwick Boseman, it's yeah. like you can't replace him. No, uh, because he's, such he's only an been iconic... in four films. Sorry. Right, he, Chadwick Boseman was such an iconic. Uh, uh, his his version of Black Panther was so iconic and so meaningful to, uh, to that community, to people of color within that community. I'm so, I'm grateful that people of color had a superhero to look up to. Right, like, yeah, we, yeah, yeah we we had superheroes to look up to when we were kids, but it's, I think it's just so uncommon for uh, uh, a child of color to have a superhero that they see that looks like them and they can be inspired by and they want to be just like, but they see that re regardless of what they look like, they can do great things. And that's one thing that I really liked about Black Panther. Yeah. Like I understand that from your perspective. And I also noticed that like, if we look at it from this aspect, that Superman was replaced multiple times. Batman was replaced multiple times. Yeah. Joker was replaced multiple times. Mm -hmm. Like, Actors change all the time. Yeah. The only time that we're like, we need to like let these characters go and have someone else take over the mantle is when we feel like their story is complete. And with Chadwick yeah. Boseman... Um, his story like, wasn't. His story wasn't. So I felt like they should have had someone to put in his place to finish up his story. And then from that point forward, like, uh, uh, like you know, like with Tony Stark, he started Iron Man since day one. And yeah. it was part of the MCU yeah. since day one. And then he died off because we felt like his story was complete. Which how we and both it, been. And it was. Yeah. So did we need a replacement for Tony Stark uh, when we, uh, when like a he, like let's just say hypothetically if Robert Downey Jr. actually dies. But his character is like still in the film. His story is complete because he's been in, a, a bit in a, like enough films so that way you don't need a new actor to replace him. Unless it's something crucial, then 
you need to reiterate something or change the whole narrative of the story. But when you have, uh, but, uh, but when you have like specific characters that you felt like their story has not been complete, but they like, but they actually die in real life, it's really unfortunate and it's sad because there's so many missed opp- because there's so many opportunities that we're gonna miss now. Because now that Chadwick Boseman is dead, we're not gonna have the show. Uh, we're not gonna have the love story with Storm and uh, Black Panther because that is a key story in the comics. We're not gonna have uh, Black Panther take on Namor because Namor flooded down Wakanda at one point, and we're not gonna have um, Storm and Black Panther's kid, uh, which I forget the name of it, but. He also plays a key character in the Young Avengers as well. So, so again, that's three key storylines now gone, uh, because Chadwick Boseman died from cancer on that, which is sad. Um, personally, I think they should have thrown in another actor to finish off at least Black Panther two and three, but I completely understand why they did that. I just think they should have thrown in someone else. Yeah. Again, it's just so, hard when you have an actor that's so well known as that that character. Right? No, like I completely understand that. Yeah. I completely understand that. Yeah. Like, yeah. See, I, I think we got to look back at Marvel as a whole. I remember, guys, like, I, like when we were in high school. I remember we were debating about how they made certain movies, like the Avengers, and we. I remember. Before the deal of Fox, of 20th Century Fox, I can't believe we're here. That the fact that like Marvel, that Disney bought 20th Century Fox, so now has the rights to X Men. Like now we're gonna have X Men in the MCU, Disney's gonna monopolize right? everything. I'm telling yeah. you right now, yeah. <laughs> they're gonna buy everything. <laughs> They'll buy everything they can. And like, That's it. But I rem- but I remember a time back then that like people would c- complained. It's like. People complained that, oh, it's not true to the comics. It's not true to this. I don't know if you guys remember that. Those yeah, comics. I yeah. heard that a lot, especially so, during Civil War. So, but but it's, now now that we're... It's, oh yeah, it's an adaptation. So, yeah, it's not going to be... Yeah, it's not going to exactly. be one-to-one with the comics in every single circumstance because it just... It can't be. They could get it as close as possible, but it's never going to be one-to-one because things happen, stories change, actors, unfortunately, pass mm-hmm. away... And it com- and things yeah. happen that complicates the whole uh, process. So, um, like already, like I mean, look at Thanos. He w- they changed his whole motivation for wiping out half of humanity. Instead of trying to impress death, now he's doing it because he feels it's the right thing to do. Right? Yeah. Which I don't understand exactly. why they didn't include death in the storyline because I felt like that was part of the key aspect of his motive to wipe out half the population. They, they, in the comics, they make him a, a, a crazed titan, right? Where it's like, yeah, I want to impress the, the woman of my dreams, death. And then, and she's always, she's the kind of woman that's like, no, not good enough, right? But oh, right, it's, yeah. It's, we, we, might, we might not, we might see that still. It might, he, the, like, where did he get the idea to wipe out half, half of the planet, you know? Like, why, where did he get that? It's totally possible they might incorporate that story still that he got it from death mm-hmm. like when death was the one that like 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 in the bible where the snake you know went to eve and it's like eat this apple you know what i mean like or eat this fruit so yeah. it's like um it can be something like that where it, it, death went to thanos and it was like I, you know <laughs> you know it'll save your planet killing half the planet <laughs> no like right. you know that, that would totally appease her and then in a way that's also it would make sense to him in a way of being like oh you know what you're so right you know like it's because i don't know i mean there's a way that they can go about it with death miss, uh, mistress yeah. death um what i was gonna say though about about like the changes of of the mcu you know and that they were not one to one to the, not only are they not one to the one to the comic right but now now the the fact that, that we used to complain back then and and looking looking back from that time and looking and like now looking comparing it to now we can look back to those movies and being like it all makes sense like everything is it's like the avengers like all the everything was building up to create a world of superhumans you know 
mutants, for example. Like, where are they going to come from? Yeah. They could come from the one that's going to create the mutants, possibly. You know, it's we mm -hmm. don't know. Um, but this is the fact that how things have gotten crazier and crazier, and then and the MCU is its own little world, and and it's creating more and more super beings. It's just like. I'm excited to see what happens next because it's just getting crazier and crazier of people getting more powers and mm -hmm. powers, you know? I, I so, really gotta... And it makes sense I really that gotta give um, John Favreau and Kevin Feige the round of applause because they absolutely... Literally. They absolutely deserve uh, all the credit for, you know, actually planning it from the start. And, uh, Josh, I think you might actually like to know this. Um, Kevin Feige actually did have involvement with... Um, uh, helping John Favreau with the Mandalorian. Oh, there you go. Advising him on how to create like a more interconnected story with a bunch of things going on because they're they're expanding the Mandalorian into other uh, Star Wars projects as well that are doing the same thing with the timeline. So it's it's interesting to see, um, not necessarily the Marvelization of Star Wars, but to kind of have a Marvel type influence on star wars and yeah uh, like i think like um like different different like brands like star wars dc mortal Kombat, they're all starting to think along the terms of like how we can set like how can we get our properties to like come together and like make a nice cohesive story but have like little subsidiaries of movies and then have them all connected to one right yeah so because it's definitely it's definitely good to have Feige to like help help out with the Mandalorian, but also, um, but also noticing that the Marvel formula of setting up the MCU and setting up different kinds of multiverses, cinematic universes, TV universes of every single like like every single popular comic book fan, it's kind of a unique aspect to storytelling and that's what i really like about that because i'm a, because i'm trying to be a story writer myself and this is just one of those things where like i'm just so drawn to that the the those those kind of stories makes me want to be part of the film industry and writing my own stuff like that because that because i guarantee you if they if the mcu was never created i probably wouldn't be interested in the film industry right now hmm. that's just my take yeah but that's 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 huge, you know, and and I'm sure there's many people like like that too, and yeah, that you have a point. It, the, the the Marvel Cinematic Universe is so huge in the way that it's progressed and 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 how the story has progressed. It's if you crazy. think back to yeah. when um, Iron Man came out and there was that um, after credit scene with Nick Fury mentioning like bringing together a team and everything. That was iconic. Yeah. It was, that was like, iconic. It was iconic, iconic, but at the same time, it was just. It had to have felt absurd because we were so used to um, movies trying to set up connected universes and stuff like that and having it fail, like not having it work. So we probably thought, oh, yeah, sure, it'll be it'll be cool, but it would never happen. And then a few years later, 2012, we got The Avengers and it was a hit. Like it was a massive hit. And it's it's all because Marvel took the time to develop the characters in their own movies with the plan in mind that they were going to bring them together. It was all planned. Like, yeah, they hit some hiccups on along the way. Like, some Marvel movies are better than others, right? That's just, It's just a fact, right? Things happen. But, ultimately, they had a plan. They, had, they knew where they were going. They knew where they were going to end up. They knew Thanos was coming. They promised it for a long time. And then it happened. DC, take notes. <laughs> oh, right? <laughs> Literally. I'm so... Like, I'm a, I'm a DC fanboy, and I'm so upset with DC Warner Brothers. What have they done the, with the just... Like, with the theatrical release of Justice League? Like, like the HBO version. So much better. You, you so can much thank, better. Uh, you can thank so Josh Whedon better. for that. Um, well, yeah, okay, okay, Josh Whedon, <laughs> stick to Avengers. I'm sorry, but no. Just Sweden, screw yeah. you. Okay, <laughs> if you're listening to it, if you're listening to this for for some dumb luck, screw <laughs> you. Okay. Anyways, um, I, uh, <laughs> Josh, you mentioned about like like uh, like from earlier. I wanted to mention about Black Panther again. Just one quick um, quick moment about the like you thought you they they should change the yeah. actor just to continue the story, right? But 
um with all the changes that marvel has done in the past to like even now like i i uh it's it might give him a chance to also like put put suri as like somebody who's like like she not only take the mantle of black panther but she might be like um, the lbt like the lgbtq <laughs> like she yeah she might be um hell what what if they make like storm you know lesbian that would be cool that'll be oh cool. you mean uh, like have like shuri and storm be a couple yeah that's what uh I'm here's the problem there's a massive age gap <laughs> i guess but like they could make Storm the same age. Matt. Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh yeah, it's true. Like it's the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Like they basically made Valkyrie like an uh, like a alcoholic, and they made <laughs> and they switched her hair from like blonde to black. So it's like okay. Yeah, I don't know. That's the the, the possibilities again. The possibilities are endless. Like it might be, it might actually go that route. But yeah, uh, yeah. Like you got a point. We'll like they don't need to like take the exact source material. They can like get inspiration from the comics. But really, at this point, the MCU is its own thing now. Like they're just gonna take their Literally. inspirations from the comics and then just go from there. Okay. Literally. Hold on, guys. I'll be back one second. Just uh, yeah. to, uh discuss your um, keep keep talking just so we have uh, air time going. So we don't have stuff. Oh, yeah, we're good. Okay, be right back. Sup, bros. <laughs> Sup, bros. Sup, bro. Okay. So, so um, for the for the next episode, for the next, like, podcast we do, we should talk about... We got to we gotta talk about the Justice League. Okay, because I know you have a lot to say about that, especially so with the DC Extended Universe. I want to see you rage. I want to see you, I, I, like, pop off at this shit. Dude, I I love the DC like the DC universe and and I want to see it so like grow into something huge. I, would it grow huge to uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe? At this point, it's way too late. But yeah. <laughs> but the thing is that it would definitely there's a lot of potential to grow into something brand new and and people need brand and would love brand new. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, like think of it this I'm, way. Basically, um, you have. Um, I'm gonna try to see if I can do this without going as really as as my dirty mind goes. But <laughs> but okay okay okay. But when you say that, okay, so think of like the Marvel films and think of the DC films. Now compare to them when they're both in bed. Oh geez. Now think about who is better in bed. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Basically. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. yeah. Like that's pretty much how I'm elaborating that because the de- like basically the Marvel takes their time. They know exactly what they're doing. They go. <laughs> they try to plan every scenario. They try to like make sure that that the person is satisfied. <laughs> then you got DC that's just like just trying everything they can to catch up. And the next thing you know, the uh the then the opposing one is like. Is that all? <laughs> literally, literally, literally. That's that's literally what it yeah. is. Oh, yeah, yeah. We gotta talk about that next episode. Yeah, sure, yeah, because, yeah. But that's definitely more like uh, comic. Yeah, like I can't wait to see your rage on that though. That's funny as hell. But I'll tell you, I'll tell anybody who's listening right now. I love the the Snyder cut. Hate Joss Whedon's cut. Uh, okay, hate I hate the BS. Sorry, the BVS. Uh, the a uh, theoretical cut, but the extended one. It's a, it's little, a little better, better but is it as good as like the extended Justice League cut? No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't watched the. It's I haven't. Really e- I haven't watched Justice League either. Josh Whedon or Zack Snyder's cut, but I've heard Zack Snyder's cut is far superior. Far, far superior. superior. This is okay. This is the problem with like okay. This is the problem with the film industry in terms of like giving cre- creators, uh, creative directors, creative control. Right? It's been an ongoing issue for uh, for a while now, and you obviously can't really fault the directors for being upset, for being emotionally and mentally drained for the fact that they're uh, that the uh, that the executives and the corporates of each of the film studios decide to make those uh, executive changes. It's going to make them think, like, what the actual fuck? Like, why do I spend so much time on this thing, right? Mm-hmm. So that's how Zack Snyder is feeling. And he feels like, I don't blame him. 
and Ray Fisher, like, he's, like, uh, he's obviously not, like, going through too well as well because Joss Whedon is, like, being a bad apple towards him. So there's that as well. Among um, other issues. And, yeah. Um, um, this is why Warner Brothers need to, like, get their nose out of the director's asses and let them do their jobs. <laughs> yeah, Cause, yeah. Let's... Because oh, I, I, yeah, I really sorry. do think that DC has a good track record with uh, their villains most of the time. Uh, so, yeah. Most of the time, yeah. S- in some cases, they're better than Marvel's. Sometimes. It really depends. Mar- Marvel has a few bad apples here and there, but um, DC... I- yeah, but at least uh, but at least they recognize their mistakes yeah. and they moved on. Yeah. Oh, man. I remember... I remember we, being we, at uh, at uh, Stan Lee's uh, panel. R- rest in peace, Stan. Uh, he he gave a good amount of time uh, for questions at the end of his panel, and uh, one question that a fan uh, asked him was, uh, "How do you think DC will have a good movie?" So, um, because of <gasps> oh! because of Stan's hearing, it wasn't the greatest. He had to have somebody on stage like repeat the question to him. So he he had it rep- repeated again. So when he heard the the question. He said, oh, let me write it. Let me write it. Whoa. Now that, yeah, like, as soon as I heard that, uh, I felt that. Oh, but yeah. I was like, oh. That was, it, it, a was a, it was a great panel to be a part of. I didn't, I didn't meet Stan. I wish I had. He, he really was a, a, a definitely a, a great okay. guy. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's dearly missed. He, he is definitely missed by, uh. All, all the fans. Well, he created one of the most iconic comic books and in his generation, and it just bled into our generation. And the, and, and it's crazy how, you know... And, and, like, I mean, seeing an interview of how, like, he loved his work... The fact that he, he saw his work being translated into movies and he loved it, it was just good enough for him, you know? And that's... Something that I I really admire that he looked at him being as a as like we're we're all creatives here like we're all creatives and the fact that we even look at our work with pride as well and 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 if we get recognized by somebody out there and it gets blown up in the in the industry somehow like I mean I'm sure we're, we're going to be happy as well you know I agree. So. Um. I was gonna say one more thing. I want. I had a question thrown out. I just. I just thought about it, um, mm-hmm. Nathan. So you remember in in Rise of the Skywalker, uh, right? Yeah. The movie. So so obviously, <laughs> um, <and laughs> obviously. So in the part in the part that uh, that they 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 had extra footage. I think of Carrie Fisher. Yeah, they had right? unused Fisher, footage right? from uh, the Rise of Skywalker on from the no, sorry, the Force Awakens that the, they hadn't used uh, for that movie. So what they yeah. did was they they had the yeah. scenes of Carrie Fisher, and uh, they. Yeah. So what they did was they they took out everything except her face for each of the scenes and they created a digital body for her so when you see her in the rise of skywalker she has a digital body but the face is entirely carrie fisher so what they did was they they had leia the character right and they built the scene around her so yeah I, i i definitely have to admire um that work that they did because that is a that is a very very hard thing to deal with where an actor that's so um yeah. a major part of your film is not there but you feel this responsibility yeah. to honor the character honor the actor who passed and to give them a proper send-off without that actor being there and that's that's definitely hard and that's that's something i feel like you're trying to tie it back to chadwick boseman right um yeah yeah you know yeah i I don't know if they would do the same thing for chadwick i feel like i feel like the most respectful thing that they could do is not necessarily copy what they did for odin in uh, thor ragnarok but if they were to have the character pass away peacefully i i'm sure there's i'm sure there's a way they could do it it's just hard when you don't have the actor there 
and that that adds a whole other yeah. uh, complicated uh, scenario to that. Um, Josh, do you think? Even my brother, Josh, do you think they oh, could sorry. do something yeah. like that? They could have Chadwick honored in some way if they they don't kill the character off in a violent way. They kill him off in a way that's fitting to the character. Um, I think. I think the best way to do it is to have black, like, I think in order to have them do that, they need to create a good, like, storyline to start off with, which means they need to have Namor as the villain and have him wipe out Wakanda, but then Shadow Bozo stops Namor in spare of his life. Like, if they just kill him off because he gets exploded or car crash or, or something like that, then that's, gonna, that's, then that's just going to be like, what the fuck? And it's because, gonna feel, uh, because it's yeah, just like it's, an it's, Iron Man. Through. It's gonna f yeah. in that way. It would feel because like an insult to Chadwick. So they need to do it in a way that's fitting yeah. for both the character and the actor. I can picture the opening sequence being like um, Chadwick um, seeing Namor. He comes across and he fights him off. Then he sees a massive tidal wave, and then he manages to stop it. But in order to do that, he kind of like sacrifices his life by going on full overdrive with using his like um, his his vibranium shockwave uh, back in Black Panther and in uh, Endgame. If he can do that at full blast to stop the wave, but also sacrificing his life in the process, that would be a good way to honor him. If he just gets killed off, like um, I don't know, Namor stabs him in the spear. Okay, close enough. But if he just gets like uh, <laughs> killed in a car crash or, or something like that, or like, or, uh, or like, let's just say he falls off a cliff and then dies, yeah, it'll be too lame. Too I feel lame. like it'll be too lame. And too I feel like ideally, if they uh, have yeah. unused footage of Chadwick doing other things that they didn't, you know, have in the other movies, and they can reuse that and maybe reuse dialogue, like use unused dialogue and things, they could. Um, artificially create some kind of performance there because they have to do they have to do something without yeah. Chadwick being there but they can't just have Chadwick disappear they can't just have the character disappear with no yeah. explanation they have to find a way to uh, explain his absence and uh, I feel personally if it were me doing it I would kill the character off in a way that's both honoring but also satisfying right it's it's an unfortunate thing to do but with. also uh but also quick maybe not necessarily quick but to have it feel like have it have it done at the right time there has to be a right moment for it if you do it right at the start of the movie i feel like that would be kind of disingenuous it all up yeah but how else are they gonna do it though that's the question yeah. They they might they might even just do something simple. They might not even just they might do something simple that that uh, acknowledge they might acknowledge actually that the that the actor passed away, and that they'll write it off that that the, the that the character itself. Or what they could they, do is that in the Battle of Endgame, he got severely wounded and he got an infection, and that slowly made him die. Or oh yeah maybe. Uh, I, like I, I thought of it as like the Paul Walker situation. Like you guys saw how they did, like they used his brother, and 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 they digitally put a face on yeah. his brother, uh, Paul Walker. You know because he was the closest to look alike. And then if you look at the other movies, you know the other movies kind of, that came after, the the like Paul Walker's character lives on in that universe because they never they never killed him off. They just they said that oh yeah no he's. He's with his family, and we don't want to like bring him back into this life again. And so, and then, but then we have this new movie coming out, and we see, uh, you know, uh, the the wife kicking butt. So I just wanted, I just uh, so I don't know how it would work with Paul Walker, in that point. But I mean, it's yeah, I, I don't know. It's just a lot of discussion in the air of how yeah. respectful can they go. That's true. Yeah, like I think that's good enough for right here. What do you guys think? Okay, yeah, okay, so we'll do a send-off. Alright, uh, thanks so much for watching this, uh, 
first episode of uh, Nerd Legion. Uh, hit the notification bell and the subscribe button to make sure you get all updates about our future videos. Uh, this has been Nerd Legion. I'm Nathan. I'm Josh. <laughs> 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 no, I'm Jose. Why, why'd you take my name, bro? <laughs> to Nerd Legion. I'm Josh. Yes. And we'll see you guys next time. See ya. Bye bye. See ya.